Oh, yeah, yeah. I always guess the, the wrong, I place 946, it's 944.
protection from all harm, and pray as well for our brothers and sisters who are attending us. And we pray for our leaders, especially who is always growing with our true mother. We pray that they will always follow her directions and unite with her and we pray that they will be inspired by being with her and we pray for the World Mission Headquarters that is based in Chongkyo, Korea, in Chongkyo, Rome, <coughs> we pray for our elder sister, Sanjinim, and her husband, Prince of Nim, who are always even with our Kuma, and we pray for their success always, and we pray also for the Universal Peace Federation that is acting as the able United Nations all over the world. We pray for the UPF Chairman, Dr. Chang Shikya, and all the international vice presidents that govern Thomas Wong and family and all their staff. We pray for their victory always, and we pray as well for all the continental leaders all over the world, especially our own Archbishop Kim, Kim for the North America and the Caribbean. We pray for his success and safety always, and we pray as well for all the presidents of all the national headquarters of our family federation for world peace, and unification headquarters, especially here in the United States of America. We pray for Reverend and Dr. Michael Malcolm and his family and his staff and the brothers and sisters who are with him in the tour ever since it started in San Leandro, California. We pray for their safety always as they travel now to our place here in Washington, D.C., which we will meet them uh, in Saturday, July 12, 2014. We pray for all the regions and districts all over the world. We pray that they will be a success and will be victorious always. And we pray for our own region here in this is one. We pray for our regional leader, Reverend Ernest and Keiko Papa. And we pray as well for all the pastors and center leaders and religious leaders all over the world, especially here in the mid Atlantic area. We pray for Reverend James Stewart in Tulsa, Maryland, and in Norfolk, Virginia. We pray for Reverend Kira Ota, and in Richmond, we pray for Father Aiden Bayo, and here in the Beltway, we pray for Mason and June for Northern Virginia. We pray that they will always support more things every weekend, every other Sunday, and we pray as well for the Maryland area and the Reverend Milton Stevens and his wife, and Co pastors like Ms. Ms. Jones and Goodby and others. We pray for their success always and they may even reach or surpass their goals. And we pray in the Washington, D.C. area. The ACLC chairman who's living here, Bishop Augustus Stalas, and his wife and two children. We pray for their safety always, and we pray for Pastor Reverend Zagary Oliver, his wife, Fulisan Dorbiana. We pray for their success always, 
and we pray for unity, prosperity, and not only goodness, but always victory for our brothers and sisters who are connected to our good faith and to this church. And we pray all of this in our names and in my name, Athanasius, Francis, Jacob, and blessed of family, our Jew, our Jew, our Jew. Uh, Good morning. Yes, we're still reading <coughs> the world scripture and the teachings of Sun Myung Moon. And we're now on page 266 under the subtopic human beings must choose between God and the devil. This is the one. <coughs> the teachings of our, <coughs> our Father. God is supremely selfless and supremely public-minded, whereas Satan is absolutely self-centered and only out for himself. September 18, 1976. God has no capacity to be corrupted. He is eternal, unchanging, and unique. Therefore, regardless of his power, Satan can never bring God under his control. Because God is true, and Satan cannot digest a true being. So now on page 67, then why does God, who aspires the, to be the Lord of all creation? Now after 266, now we're 267 now. Uh, Satan does not have God's unchanging nature. nature. Quite the opposite. God is unchanging while Satan is always changing to suit himself. God is unique and Satan is not. God is eternal while Satan is temporal. This, in essence, is their dividing line. Why then are human beings the objects of both God's desire and Satan's desire, people stand between God and Satan. They have qualities that can relate to both world and Satan's world. He is someone who changes from moment to moment more on God's side or Satan's side. He is someone who is constantly creating divisions and fights in the home, more susceptible to God or to Satan. What about a person who is immersed in his daily affairs and does not think about the whole or the world or history or eternity or any kind of long-term vision? What about a father who neglects his wife and children, who only goes off to a local bar and drinks every night, seeking his own pleasure. Certainly Satan will claim such people. And this is from a speech, February 20, 1983. We are living in a fallen realm. That is why we need to live a life of faith. Remember, this and always be aware that Satan governs this fallen world. This is not merely a concept, it is reality. On page uh, 161 to 218, on a speech on February 15, 1987, the Bible exhorts us to pray ceaselessly. The devil can attack us and even work through us 24 hours a day. Mm. Although God is with us, he stays in a vertical relationship with only the mind as his base. 
how effectively then can he work with us? Satan can come at us from any direction, from 360 degrees, hence we are bound to be overwhelmed. And this is from a speech on February 25, 1990. Evil activity in the spirit world had been increasingly gradually, increasing gradually ever since the human fall, but the situation changed drastically in the 1980s. When hosts of evil spirits descended to the earth and greatly increased their activities there, why did this happen? In former times, when the central figures of the providence did not know the identity of Satan, the root of sin or the nature of the original sin, Satan felt at ease and could take his time creating his self-centered world. However, when the true parents came into the world, the situation began to change. The true parents revealed the identity of Satan, the root of sin, and that the original sin was fornication. Yeah. They figured out all Satan's traits and all his tricks, facts that not even God had revealed to humanity. Then the true parents began making conditions so that Satan could no longer stand on his feet on the earth. Yes. As they achieved victory after victory in the providence of restoration, Satan was taken aback. Then he began to get nervous. In response, Satan mobilized evil spirits in the spirit world to work with evil spirits in the bodies of people on the earth by stimulating the resentment and their desire to take revenge on the descendants of the people who had caused them pain. In particular, Satan watched closely for opportunities to invade blessed families. Whenever he found any bad conditions, he put evil spirits into them. He wanted to block them from advancing and turn them from a God-centered life. God expected that blessed families would make unity of heart with God and true parents by living with absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience. Satan cannot invade such families, but when blessed families acted in unprincipled ways, they made conditions for Satan to invade them. Most of them expected that the victory of true parents would protect them. They didn't look deeply at themselves to check whether they had everything for which Satan could accuse them. They didn't reflect on whether they still had a fallen nature. Therefore, at least from now on, we must work hard to purify ourselves mm -hmm. from evil and sin and be reborn as original, true children. And this is from a message from the spiritual world by our elder brother, Hong Jin Moon, January 1, 2001. Yeah, message from the spirit world. So we have a new topic, sin, and now it's five, almost five nineteen. So anybody wants to read the new yeah. topic? You have an essay is here. continue to read the topic sin. The biblical meaning of sin is to miss the mark. 
Thus, sin denotes how human beings deviate from the true standard of life. There are many ways to conceive of sin. Here we present four. The first is evil deeds, which typically comprise murder, stealing, sexual immorality, lying, and drunkenness. The world's religions are anonymous in condemn condemning these sins. The second meaning of sin is a self-centered mindset by which we do harm to others, whether intentionally or unintentionally. This is a more subtle understanding. It invites introspection, introspection about the, mo the motives behind our behavior and the way our daily life impages on others. Sin has power. It binds us and blocks our approach to God. A third way to understand sin is to see it as all pervasive imperfection and fallenness. A universal condition of humankind. In this light, Father Moon explains that all sin is the result of human fall, which severed our original relationship with God and left us in a state of alienation and strife. Now we read uh, subtopic one, meaning of sin. And we read, Whoso in this world destroys life, tells lies, takes what is not given, goes to others' wives, and is addicted to intoxicating drinks, such a one digs up his own root in this world. Dhammapada 246 uh, point 47 and we read do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God do not be deceived neither be neither the immoral nor idol idolaters nor adulterers nor sexual perverters, perverts, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkard, nor rev uh, revealers, nor robbers will inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 6, chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. And we read, The plunderer of gold, the liquor drinker, the invader of a teacher's bed, the the bra the bra the Brahmin's killer. These four kind these four sink downward in the scale. And fifth, he who consorts with them. So, Chando, Chandogya Upanishad 5.10.9 And we read The prophet said When a man commits fornication He is not a believer When a man steals He is not a believer When a man drinks wine He is not a believer When he takes plunder on account of which others rise their eyes at him. He is not a believer. And when a man defrauds his neighbor, he is not a believer. 
so beware beware hadith of bukhari and muslim from islam and we read if you rahula are desirous of doing a deed with the body you should reflect on that deed of your body thus the deed that i am desirous of doing with the body is a deed of my body that might denounce to the harm of self and that might deduce to the harm of others and that might conduce to the harm of both this deed of body is unskilled its yield is anguish its result is anguish you if you rahula reflects thus should find it so a deed of body like this rahula is certainly not to be done by you my 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 jima nikaya 1.415 this is from buddhism and we read behold the lord's hand is not shortened that it can not save or hear or his ear dull that it cannot hear but your iniquities are made have made a separation between you and your god and your sin have hid his face from you so that he does not hear isaiah the book of isaiah chapter 59 verses 1 to 2 and we read bound by the fetters of the fruits of good and evil like a cripple without freedom like a man in prison my entry upnishad 4.2 from the uh, from hinduism and we read when we choose to sin what we want is to get some good or get rid of something bad the lie is in this that what is done for our good ends in something bad and what is done to make things better ends by making them worse why this paradox except that the happiness of man cannot can come not from himself but only from god and that to live according to oneself is to sin and to sin is to lose god saint augustine city of god uh, 14.4 this is from christianity and now uh we start to read the teachings of sang myang moon what is sin it is what emerges from self-centered living and not living for the sake of others why is stealing wrong a thief steals out of his personal desire and wrong of the act begins there what is wrong with stealing a dress from a big department store there there is no where no one will miss it the dress has value imparted by the people who invested their sacrifice and service in making it 
Thus, the dress has public value. Stealing it is a sin, because taking something without paying for it nullifies its value. September 30, 1979. And we read, we have to recognize and abide by three immutable laws. First law, do not defile the blood lineage, even at the point of death. The, the blessed blood lineage bequeathed through God's love and life must not be contaminated by actions amassed in the habitual patterns of the fallen world. Second law, the second law, do not infringe upon human rights, whether female or male, black or white, everyone is equal. Violation, violation of this is the second of all sins. Third law, refrain from stealing money and misusing public funds for selfish purposes. January 13, 2001. And we read, What is sin? People think sin is to disobey God's word, but in truth, sin is to make an, any condition by which Satan can accuse us. While it is wrong not to believe the word of God, it becomes a sin when there is a condition upon which the enemy can grab hold of us. Hence, once we transgress the law and not, not even God can do anything about it. May 4th, 1969. And we read, The human tradition of love as it has been passed down through history is evil. It is sinful, unacceptable to God. It is the enemy of God. Of all sins, fallen love is the by far the worst. It is the sin God abhors the most. Those who indulge in fallen love are God's worst enemies, whom God abhors the most. Unless we correct the way, the ways of love, God will always treat it as a sin and those who engage in love as enemies and they are bound to perish. It is only natural that they perish. Have you seen Pompeii in Italy? Because of its descendant and immoral social life, the city was destroyed by instant calamity. Sodom and Gomorrah too were destroyed for the same reason. The Roman Empire too perished for the same reason. Looking at this history, historical evidence, America will also surely perish unless she repents and repudiates its immoral ways of love. April 29, 1979. And we come to the end of our reading uh, now in the top of the topic scene. Uh, tomorrow we can start subtopic number two, the pervasiveness of sin. Uh, is there anyone So Who wants to share? Fall of this three major sins. You want to be in that? Yes. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> if you're sharing, just come. Just come and well, share so that everyone can hear you. 
Well, Sister Nita well, is uh, sharing something. It's very important you caught that uh, from Father. Yeah, please. Well, I don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, Father, he talked about uh, three major sins. Yes. What was the first one? It has something to do with... The, uh, the fall. The, 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 yeah, yeah. the lineage. The lineage. Do, do not, not the defile lineage. the lineage. Yes. So I feel like those three major points are something that uh, we really need to pay attention to. We yes. really need to do that. Yes. So uh, it caught my eye, my ear, from listening to the other scriptures yes. about what they think sin is yes. and what defiles a person. Because Jesus, he spoke about it. It's not what you, but go in. Mm. But it's out. But what comes out of your mouth. Yes. That is what it's out. Which is in your heart. Yes. Okay, but we, like you said, uh, I think, did you say Pompeii? Or? Yeah, Pompeii. Pompeii. It's, uh, 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 it's like another piece of Solomon Gomorrah or Solomon or like the, Rome, the Roman Empire thing. Oh. Yeah. From what we unnatural, it's unnatural us. Yeah. Uh, from, from what we uh, uh, understand, and you, it's not very much they say about Solomon, anymore, but uh, it was so bad that the baby couldn't even come out of the womb before they were gone. That's how bad it was. Terrible animals. Rome, we didn't even talk about them cats. They, you know, I mean, it was just. But. Uh, Hopefully, un unfortunately, there is still this type of behavior going on in the world. Fallen behavior. And uh, just, just to have no respect for the, for the sexual form. That's, that's really what it is now. You know, they don't know the true value of the sexual form. Also, you read about how father and mother victory. We just talked about victory this morning, which made that made the devil tremble. <laughs> that made the devil tremble in fear. And that, you know, that I paid attention to that as well. But, yeah, I focus on those three major points, which is the violation. And the top number one was to defile the blood. So I wanted to thank you for that information. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Nita. So that means we, are, if we have the blessing, we need to keep the blessing and keep the purity, you know, so that we don't defile, of course, the blood lineage. And, uh... But it takes two to do that. Yes, yeah, seven all over. Place your speaker well, And what also has, I was thinking about it, that humanity has watered down the potential to be a You're in speakerphone, Reverend Oliver? Because, yeah. We can hear you clearly. Uh, Reverend Oliver, could you speak a little louder? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, no, now no. we can hear you, yes. I was saying we about the whole society now, the whole culture that is spreading around the world rapidly to minimize the true nature of that evil and how it's committed. Um, and in such an insidious way. But what caught most of my heart and my mind was that only Father really gets to care um, of the 
Thank you, Reverend Oliver. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we read that on page 267 that uh, Satan always watched closely for opportunities to invade blessed families. Yes. And when blessed families acted in unprincipled ways, they made conditions for Satan to invade them. Yes. So. Most of them expected that the victory of true parents would protect them. They didn't look deeply at themselves to check whether they had anything for which Satan could accuse yes. them. So they didn't reflect on whether they still had any fallen nature. Therefore, at least from now on, he asks us, we must work hard <coughs> to purify ourselves from evil and sin and be reborn as original true children. So yes. we're like true children, like yes. you know. And this comes from uh, our elder brother Hung Jinin in the message from the spirit world. So, so what struck me the most also was when I read about you know God is always there in vertically as a vertical relation with only the mind as its base. Of course the body of course is you know is a base of Satan because uh, how effective then can he work with us? Satan can come at us from any direction from 360 degrees hence we are bound to be overwhelmed. So we always control the body with our mind control sleep, control even eating mm -hmm. and uh, drinking and, and of course yeah, eventually sex. Yes. If we can control that, we yes. have unity of mind and body become we become ideal people, we can even control the the angelic world. Yes. And we can do our bidding. Yeah. You know. But the the good ones of course. Yeah. yeah. 
also something that I learned there is people justify and misuse the Bible mm. where it says that it is not what goes into the mouth mm -hmm. that defiles a man. So people opt to go and drink and smoke mm -hmm. and do bad things, mm -hmm. saying that it is not what they, con they consume with their mouth that defiles them. But all the scriptures there today have all said, whether it's Islam or Buddhism yes, or Christianity, yeah. they have said, do not drink. Mm -hmm. Drunkenness yes. brings seed. So, uh, I, I know these are some of the small, small conditions that some blessed members may think, oh, the Bible says, and they stick to that part mm -hmm. and they use it as an excuse to drink. Mm -hmm. So we should be careful uh, not to misinterpret God's word and use it to make conditions for Satan to attack us. Uh, That's right. Yeah. yeah. We should live completely as pure children. If uh, one thing they say, if it is the eye mm -hmm. which is making me to sin, pluck it know. and throw it and yes. go to, uh, to heaven with one eye. Yeah. We, it's we better to go to with one of these. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, from Taoism. He went to the spiritual world, and he, when he came back, he demonstrated, you know, that uh, he he confessed that he looks at the eyes with with his eyes with you know yes. adultery to his um, women to all the women, and he took he, it out in yes. front of his family and friends. Yes, and he, he cut, he his, cut his arm and uh, his legs, everything, because he, he used it to do evil. Yes. Eventually, even he took out his intestines and his stomach, so that it yeah. came out, and people were, uh, you know, all over the place came to see him because uh, he still didn't die after all those things. <laughs> but eventually, he died, you know, just to give the message yes. that in the spiritual world he was bound for hell. Yes. And it was his mission is to tell people not to commit sin or else you are bound to hell. Yeah. And they 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 are from not from the Christian world but from Taoism. Yeah. Yeah. If we have a problem in our physical systems, mm -hmm. I think the best solution is always to seek mm -hmm. the solution from uh, uh, from God's word first. Yes. Because God can hear. Mm -hmm. God created our body with the ability to heal from the spiritual powers. So spiritual food first. And God's spiritual body. food, mm -hmm. yeah. Then we can uh, deal with those problems now also. Physically, it manifests in the it, physical. Yeah, it, and God will guide us what to do mm -hmm. with the other physical solutions that will also make a remedy for the, the physical problems that we have. That's right. So, there is no excuse why yeah. someone should go drinking, mm -hmm. saying, I def uh, I, uh, the Bible says it's not what I take into the mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that many times with many Christians. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, anybody else wants to share uh, about a reading today? Okay, if there's none... Let's all rise and have unison prayer. Our most beloved heavenly parents, we're so thankful for this reading about sin and also about the words of the devil and his activities. We have read it before this new topic. We pray that now, as we learn and are very aware that God is in our minds and, and it is His base for the mind is always seeking for the truth, love, beauty, and goodness. And we pray that we can always really try 
through which he knew that the Spirit of God is and control our bodies, which is always seeking to be there. Pleasures here in this body is for our when our flesh to sleep and drink and also even eat all these things and eventually sex, which is the the one given by God as a blessing to couples who are blessed in marriage with maturity, mind and body. We pray that we can always teach true family values to all the people all over the world and especially here in Washington DC area where the AIDS problem is increasing. We pray that people now would really come to know that the, the best protection is absolute sex, meaning we need to have only one partner. We don't have any multiple partners. We pray that perversion will always be controlled by reading your words, our heavenly parents, and we're so thankful for letting us control sleep and everything, even our sexual desires through this condition that we make every day. We pray for each other's success. We pray that we can control the angelic world as we control our bodies, because they are the ones who are hitting us through our bodies. And Satan do and his minions are still doing. We pray that as he mobilize the spiritual world to do evil activities since 1980s. True parents, upon victory to victory, has lessened their effectivity. And we have now the Foundation Day. We pray that more and more conscientious people and blessed members will have victory over many things. And we pray all of this in all our names and in my name, Panasius Francis, Sikatalan, bless the Central Family. Our Jew, our Jew, our Jew. Uri is so modern. Yes. Yeah. 